Alright guys, this is Casey Foster from NetcodeGuides.com doing a demo review here for Fortnite on his DE Train matchmaking game. Uh, this is five players, or five random players versus another five random players, so obviously the teamwork and communication is not going to be the best. Um, matchmaking is more of an individual kind of play unless you're queued with a bunch of people and you guys are in Mumble or, you know, whatever. Um, so... Uh, just let me preface this early. Fortnite describes himself as a, a or sorry, a passive uh, player. His play style is a passive player, and um, I would definitely have to agree with that. I would go as far as saying he is a hyper passive player. Um, not a bad thing, but it definitely hurts him a lot in his gameplay, and it there are a lot of rounds where he does not contribute to his team or the round. Um, so him being a passive player. Uh, <laughs> gets him into a lot of these situations that he's in right now. He's a, in a one-on-three situation with the bomb down in the bomb site, 50 seconds left, and kind of just running around. So here, you see a guy who's basically AFK. Your first bullet was a little to the right of him, and your second shot was right on his head. As you can see, your crosshair is basically dead on him, and you're going to shoot another bullet, but you're not going to get the kill. We'll see here. And you hit him. You know, look at your crosshair. There's another bullet up there on the sky. And then you pull down and you get him there. So let me start off by saying when you have an AFK kill or a player that's looking away from you and you basically have all the time in the world to line up the shot, take your time, line up the shot. If you don't feel comfortable hitting the player in the head, shoot him in the chest. A lot of people think that you have to shoot everybody in the head all the time. Uh, yes, the headshot is the quickest way to kill somebody, but... If you have the jump on somebody like this, you can line it up, you know, in the head, take your time, hit him in the head, he kills him quickly, or you can just shoot him in the body, take your time, put it right in his chest, pull down three bullets, burst, boom, he's dead, same kind of time, and he doesn't get a chance to get a shot off on you. So in that situation right there, he got lots of shots off on you. Luckily, he didn't hit you and kill you or do any damage to you uh, in a situation like that, but it was very possible with, you know, how you got a little excited and just shot your way around. So now you're in a, you know, 1v2, 42 seconds left. You're walking. I mean, it was a good idea to change your position, but you just kind of can't walk here in these kind of situations. You needed to just run straight to ladder, jump up if you were planning on winning this round. But based on how you play this round, I'm not sure if you knew or weren't paying attention to the time, but you definitely run out of time. <clears throat> and you realize that about right here. There's 20 seconds left. The bomb's down. Two dudes alive you're pretty much not going to win this round. Um, so at this kind of point in time, you kind of just want to just get some exit kills. If they exit your way and hold your ground, maybe pick up an op. Obviously, there's an op right there. Uh, but you don't decide to do that. I'm not really sure why. Maybe you don't know not to do this, but if you would have died after time, you would have got no round bonus, nor would you have had your gun. So right there, you peeked the guy, or he jumped up and peeked you. And you got the kill. Luckily, you got the kill. If he would have killed you, it would have been bad news. Betty, you wouldn't have had that op. You wouldn't have had any money. You would have died. You would have had nothing. So it's not worth the risk. Counter-Strike is a, is a game of risk, calculated risks. And you need you needed to just try and stay alive there and just hide. There was no real, Basically, there was no real reason to peek that dude. So anyway, you got away with it. Got your teammate an op. You know, great on you. All right, so here's another example of the really slow passive play. Um, you're kind of just holding an angle at Ivy. If a CT would have pushed, you definitely would have got the kill, but more than likely they're not going to push Ivy. Um, so your teammates are executing out mid, and they get one, and you get you pick up two kills here real quick. Boom, great, great job. You know, you lurked up on one. You knew that you need to check your back or check another angle to get an early kill. But if you notice... If you notice, when you throw this flash, if you notice, you still only have six bullets. So you have not reloaded, and you threw the flash. So you kind of were like, oh, got the kill, I'm going to throw the flash. And you probably at this point have forgot about it. So this is a big thing. You have all the time in the world right now to reload your gun, <clears throat> and you have all this cover. You know, it, it, little things like this is what makes a Counter Strike player not making a whole bunch of little mistakes and making a little mistake like reloading not reloading is a huge mistake especially when you get yourself into a gunfight or a situation like this um where you're about to run out of ammo and you definitely would have killed this guy right here 
right there, you would have killed that guy. That second and third bullet right there would have hit him. Obviously, you didn't hit him on the first two, but those next two bullets were definitely going to hit him, but you had no ammo. And you ran out, and it just... You know, it just cramped around. Obviously, I don't know if you would have killed the other two players, but you definitely would have killed that guy and then had a good chance or a chance at winning the rest of the round, but you didn't. So just next time, you know, just if you have a situation, you know, even if you use two bullets and you're in, in a situation where you can reload, you definitely want to reload. If it's, you know, if, if you're in a situation where you can, in this kind of situation, you were. So just next time, you know, just... Uh, you know, just just think about it. So here you guys are. You guys had an e they were an eco round. They picked up, or they were on eco. They picked up two of your guys' guns. So now you guys are fighting guns. Um, you might have got a call that the one got out back IV or something, and you get into a situation right here where you're about to fight this guy on the stairs. <clears throat> and you peek this corner right here. You check the left corner here. I mean, it's good to check everything. Not you know, absolutely necessary to check a CT spawn angle, but, you know, obviously you had some kind of call um, that the dude had made it back halls and or back IV and you were going to, you know, come and check this. So here you are coming around the corner and look at your crosshair. So obviously he's at the top of the stairs. He could have been anywhere down the stairs, up the stairs. But the biggest problem is your crosshair placement. This has been happening a few times in the rest of the game, but hasn't been uh, hasn't penalized you as bad as it did right here. So, you your idea with or your main goal with crosshair, no matter if it's the beginning of the round, end of the round, you don't think somebody's there. You do think somebody's there. You always want to have your crosshair where you think the bad guy is going to be. So, where your crosshair is at right now. It's, it's obviously too low because he's at the top of the stairs, but if he was walking down the stairs, your crosshair would be kind of near, but it would still be too high. So you, your crosshair would want to be closer to the left of the edge of that wall and lower if you were this wide peak, this far to the right. And then you would want to move your crosshair up as you came around the corner. So crosshair placement right here has killed you. So you had to correct your aim to try and shoot at him. And obviously all he did was just crouch <clears throat> on the stairs he obviously had his crosshair on you so he had the jump on you and was able to get a free frag on you you did i don't even think you hit him and he you know basically just won a very easy 1v1 where you could have you you definitely should be winning those 1v1s especially when you have the knowledge as to where he's at and he doesn't have an idea where you're at so you know the main goal with crosshair placement is always having your crosshair where the bad guy's going to be. And with a Colt, you always want to have it at head level. AK, you definitely always want to have it at head level. The difference with the Colt and the AK, the AK, if you hit them in the head, they're going to be one-shot kill. And with the Colt, you're going to have to hit them in the head and then pull down again and hit them in the head or in the body. So crosshair placement's a big thing. Like I said, you're, it hasn't penalized you as much in the rest of the demo, but there it definitely did. So just try to always keep your crosshair where the bad guy is going to be and you know, you'll have better results. All right, so you guys have about five wins in a row now on CT side. And this is another thing that I saw earlier in the demo, but has happened again. So you're outside, you're playing, you know, outside as a CT. Your main job right here is to basically turtle. You want to get some information, flash them back, smoke them off, get a kill, fall back, you know, stay alive, basically. You're just a turtle. So your teammate has already died. Um, looks like he was Ivy, or actually I don't know where he was at. No, he was outside. So, you know, somewhere outside. You get the first kill on the guy here, great. Five bullets left, you know, there's no real rush. They're not rushing outside. You don't see three of them by, you know, E-Box and coming out of Ivy, or coming out of Ladder, sorry. So there's no real there's no real rush here. But what happens right here, this is this is not the best. You have, to, like I said, you have tons of time right here to reload. Not No, no real urgency on what you're about to do. So you kill that guy and you flip over, boom, you see this guy, you've already whipped out your pistol. He's got an AK standing on top of the ladder. Um, probably not gonna go too good. So you got, uh, you did zero damage to him actually. He got an easy kill on you. And th this is, this is, uh, it, it's just a perfect example of getting a little excited. So. Like I said a few seconds ago, your main goal outside is to turtle. Get a kill, smoke them off, flash them off, delay them on their on hitting their execute outside. 
So right there, you got the first kill on the dude on E-Box, then you flipped over, you pulled out your pistol on the dude on top of ladder. Wasn't necessary. You had lots of time to reload. You had tons of cover. You were behind a train. And what should have happened there is you should have just killed the guy E-Box, stood behind that. You know, if you needed to peek out real quick to see where that dude was at, you know, that's fine. Find where he's at and run right back behind the train. Reload. Tell your teammates, hey, guys, there's one on top of one lane um, or six lane. Sorry, six train. Um, there's a guy there and your teammate from Ivy or your teammate from Z can peek and, you know, shoot at that guy and basically get his attention while you're reloading. Or you could have just not said anything and just taken your time and reloaded because he would have had to have pushed you. So it's just, it, it, this is another common problem. A lot of, you know, players at this kind of rank have, they have the uh, tendency to just want to just pull out these really crazy frag clips and just get like two and three kills and, and try and win the round and be heroes. You know, Counter-Strike is, is a team game. Regardless if you have crazy communi good communication with your teammates, you still could have just killed the dude, hid, reloaded, your teammate probably would have shot at this dude eventually because he would have had to have make a move to come at you. And then you basically create a crossfire and it increases your chances of staying alive, getting that next kill and moving on with the round. Instead, you pulled out the pistol. He got an easy kill on you because he had an AK. And, you know, that's the end of it. You know, now that your teammates are in the 3v3 outside, your IV player right here is about to get flanked. And, you know, that's probably going to be the end of the round. So... You know, just keep that in mind. You know, when you're playing outside or you're playing a situation or you're playing in a spot where you're, you're in a situation where it, there's no real urgency to, you know, no one's pushing you. You don't need to pull out the pistol and try and, you know, headshot somebody. You can just take your time, reload, and, you know, turtle up a little bit. <clears throat> so give that a shot next time. And, um, you know, you'll definitely have better results. All right. And just to recap this video quickly, there's there was... There was not a lot actually to say what you did wrong in an immediate kind of sense because you didn't put yourself in enough situations to where you would have impacted the round. So that comes with, yes, your passive playstyle, but your, your playstyle was too passive pretty much the entire game. Obviously, I haven't seen any of your other demos on other maps, but... You, you're you too passive. There was too many situations where you were trying to win clutches. Obviously, you didn't win many of them. Um, you, you were putting yourself in that situation too much. And I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about the, the topic of baiting. So I mentioned that earlier in the video. <clears throat> baiting, lurking, whatever you want to call it. There's a fine there's a there's a fine line between lurking and baiting. And in your case, you would be leaning more towards the baiting side. Um, I don't know if you like to do it for your stats to get more kills or if you like to put yourself in clutch situations. Um, either way, you weren't successful with the clutch situations and, you know, your stats weren't even that crazy, you know, at the end of the game. So I, w I would say you need to just get a little bit more aggressive and, and try and get away from this passive play style because a passive play style lurking, you know, a position like what Hiko does or what, uh, get right does you know they're they're lurking around the maps basically trying to get rotation kills or they're putting themselves into situations in 1v2s and they have the bomb and they're going to plant the bomb and try and win these situations they've been very successful at these and some people are better at it than others but in your case you just need to get a little bit more aggressive um you know you're you're walking around the map here and uh, i'm just playing the demo i'm not really commentating on what you're doing exactly right here but the, the lurking, you know, was, was killing you. And it also made it very hard for me to review this demo because you weren't putting yourself, like I said, in enough situations to have an impact on the round. And um, it's just, if you're not putting yourself in situations to impact the round and then either dying or being successful, you're not learning anything. And, 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 and I guess that's something that happens at like this kind of rank where players are just playing the game and being surprised about what's happening and just kind of being and kind of just molding to what happening what's happening in the round. What I suggest for you know people in the DMG, basically anybody who's not into competitive CS and not playing it like you know an ESEA main or ESEA premier level, you know you need to have a goal for what you're going to do every single round, regardless if it's a match, a pug, a scrim, you know you're solo queuing, whatever. 
you need to have a goal of what you're going to do every single round. I'm going to go to Ivy. I'm going to what what I wanted you to be doing this entire demo was having a smoke and a flash and going Ivy. You were executing on Ivy a lot. You needed to just smoke one side of it, flash the other, and you know hit that side of the hit that side of Ivy. And and having a goal does two things. It a gives you a goal, so you you basically have something to work towards, and then you can also while you're doing this, you can learn from this. So you can say, okay, this guy's playing Ivy. I'm going to smoke right side. What does he tend to do? He tends to flash me back off that smoke or he tends to nade it or he tends to peek it or he tends to run away. You know, you, you need to be learning, you know, and adapting to what the players are doing. So it, if you're not doing this, you're not being in it, you're not impacting the round and you're not learning. Ultimately, you're not learning. And as a Counter-Strike player, I tell, I've told this to thousands of people, your main goal while playing Counter-Strike is to never make the same mistake twice and to just always learn from your mistakes. And people just are roaming around Counter-Strike, you know, scrims, whatever, pugs, and they just roam around and just do whatever, and they just get surprised when somebody, like, outplays them or gets surprised when the same thing doesn't work a thousand times in a row. And, you know, it's just... It's just part of Counter-Strike, and it should ultimately be part of your philosophy to the game. You need to just always be trying to improve, never make the same mistake twice. If you do, try and learn from it. And reverting back to the um, to the goal uh, of each round. So we have videos about this. We have solo queue videos. We have strategy videos. Every single pro team, every single player on every pro team has a goal of what they're going to do every single round. And every single video that we make of solo queue videos about how to solo queue basically is giving you a goal of what you want to do every round. <clears throat> we have loads of videos of this for pretty much every map. And these these goals are what's going to help you convert better. You're going to get more kills. You're going to learn um, how people are going to react to these situations. You're going to learn what works for you in these situations. If you can land the headshot over the box or if you can strafe out quickly from behind a box and kill this dude in these kind of situations you will learn how you play in these kind of situations so we're not basically we're not scripting how you need to do these things it's basically just giving you an idea of how to do something in a goal and then you you know adapt your gameplay to it so you know um, with that said I would like to say thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, you know, comment, subscribe to these videos. We release more. I'm going to actually start doing a lot more demo reviews. Um, I've kind of been out of it for a little bit, but <clears throat> expect a few more of these. Um, let us know what you think in the comments below if you'd want me to elaborate more on things or if you want uh, me to review other kinds of players' demos, whatever it may be. Um, let us know. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys.